Okay, now we are going to talk about pairing for clients with central venous axis. So, by end of this topic, you should be able to understand the main points of this chapter. Basically, how to demonstrate the nursing care of client undergoing insertion of central venous axis devices competent and how to conduct some procedures especially flushing of CV catheter or line, administrating infusate via CV lines, central venous lines, infusion blood via CV line, drawing blood sample from CV line, and changing dressing of CV assay sites as well as how to remove it. Right? If removal is also important as well as same as the incision. Right? All of these procedures, we have to go in a particular manner, particular way. We, that means we need to follow a particular procedure to do this, especially with the aseptic techniques and all. So, uh, since this is a recording, I'm not going to explain each of these stuff for you, but I will give the superficial knowledge with this. For that, you have to read some extra materials as well as your guidebook, your textbook, and then with the superficial knowledge, you will be able to understand the basic knowledge of the chapter that you have to mainly study so within the time short time of period we will cover the basic of venous central venous sexes care okay so for that we will go for the ppt and the ppt is about central venous axis and catheters so what is uh, central venous axis? Basically, there's catheters inserted into large veins in central circulation. Tip of the catheter threaded to reside in lower third of the vena cava. We know, like we, we know already, we have superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Basically, the central venous axis, venous. This is not atrial axis. This is about the venous axis. So that goes in the lower third of the vena cava. That means we have to insert till that point and after that we can do chest x-rays to confirm correct placement or uh, ultrasound examination to check whether it is inserted properly or not. And definition wise, a, uh, what is CVC? A central venous catheter is an indwelling intravenous device that is inserted into a vein of central uh, vasculature. Okay, That means superior vena cava. So what are the uses of this? Why we are using these techniques? Why we are using the central venous line? That means with that simply just think maybe uh, due to some uh, infusion, maybe flushing, maybe take that like uh, constantly, maybe giving some uh, infiltrates, uh, infusions via this line, right? So there, there can be so many reasons. So let's see what are those reasons. Uh, so, the first one is difficult peripheral vascular access. That means if a patient is having a difficulty in peripheral, peripheral vascular access, example, patient with burns, previous vein injuries such as IV drug users and all, if the, venous are, if the veins are injured or if the veins are damaged with burns, so we can give the peripheral vascular access, right, especially with the CVCs. And Volume loading, that means time consuming to insert and are associated with high complication rates. Low rate is determined by caliber and length of the catheters. Shorter and greater calibers catheters delivering greater volumes over equivalent amounts of time. So that means like basically you know the diameter of the catheters will, dip, will be responsible for the flow rates. So if the catheters will be shorter and the diameter is large, larger, then definitely the flow rate will be higher. If the diameter is small as well as the length is uh, large, the length is higher, that means what? Definitely the flow rate will be low. The simple, this is simple physics that you, you all may know, right? So third, the provision of uh, caustic medication or solution. So vasoactive medications may be vasosuppressors or inotropes. Maybe due to these problems, we need to give 
and uh, external venous axis. So that because to, for this reason, we use CVC. Irritant substances, sometimes chemotherapeutic agents, cytotoxic drugs, or high concentration solutions. Right? Maybe do maybe sometimes we'll have to use also parenteral nutrition as well. So these for these reasons also we can simply use CVC, central venous catheters. Then uh, another another uses another reason why we are using central venous pressure monitoring. CVP monitoring. That means, especially with the catheter, with the CVC, central venous catheter, we can easily check the pressure of the central vein system. Right. With that, we can estimate what maybe right atrial pressure and the uh, venous circulate pressure and all. So the central venous pressure is the pressure measure in the central veins close to right atrium. It indicates mean right atrial pressure and is frequently used as an estimate of right ventricular preload. Being used as a guide for fluid management through some researchers suggest otherwise. So you can go to NCBA at any time uh, to the site and you can uh, check for the uh, suggestions, okay? Especially uh, what are the uses of uh, central venous pressure and how to uh, pressure it, how to, may, how to may, uh, monitor it and all. And another one, repeated blood sampling. Okay, that means if we need to check blood samples of a person, like uh, maybe simply we'll take more than five times a day. So that means if this venous axis is not there, that means we'll have to definitely take the blood from different different sites of the body for a several time. So that means the patient will be hurt as well as that is not a correct uh, nursing procedure. That is not a, a proper clinical practice method. So always we need to check with this. So if the patient has to take, if, if we have to take blood samples for a long time of period or several times per day, it is better to place a venous catheter. An introduction of pacemakers or another one, introduction of pacemakers or pulmonary artery catheters. So if we need to go for the pulmonary artery catheters or pacemakers, then it's always better to have the venous catheter. For hemodialysis, hemofiltration, for acute and chronic hemodialysis access also, we can easily do with CVC line. So what are the contraindications? That means like some uh, conditions are there that you cannot do the central venous access. So, what can be those reasons? Absolute reasons can be overlying skin or soft tissue infection. That means the site of the uh, invasion, the site of the site that we choose to uh, insert the venous line. If there is an infection, maybe skin infection, we cannot go for uh, catheterization because the infection can spread inside the body, right? So the other organs will be also affected with this infection. So always don't do it whether the site is having an infection or not. I mean, if the site is having an infection. And thrombophilobitis, if any thrombolytic, if thromboembolisms or any disease with the coagulation or anything, it's not, it is not good to have the uh, CBC line. So wh what are the relative uh, case, uh, what are the relative uh, reasons, I mean contraindications that we are not going to use the CVCs. Destroyed, uh, sorry, distorted anatomy, sometimes trauma status, deformities, burns, sometimes infections at the site of access, cellulitis maybe, uncooperative patients. If the patient is not cooperative enough to have this, that means if the patient is not willing to keep this in when, uh, central venous line, so that is quite risky to uh, place it because definitely the patient will remove by himself no so if the patient has to be very cooperative with this and proximal vascular injuries if any primary or any secondary vascular injuries are there so if we are giving with a pressure we definitely will have to give uh, the venous axis with the pressure so if endothelial layers of the vessels uh, of the venous lines or uh, the vascular 
are having a problem maybe due to genetic load maybe due to trauma status or any other problem so it's it is not recommended to go with the cbc and bleeding disorders and anticoagulation or thrombolytic therapy if this patient is having bleeding problem or coagulation problem or thrombolytic if the patient is on thrombolytic therapy this that is also not recommended to uh, have cbc length the 3% of complication rate has long as there are no atrial punctures absolute contraindications for subclavian access ultrasound guidance is recommended so always it is better to have better to do this with ultrasound guidance because if the puncture site will be um, misplaced or i mean uh, miss uh, i mean we couldn't found, find the place properly so what will happen so bleeding will occur so because this anticoagulation problem the co coagulation problem the co coagulation process is having problem definitely the bleeding won't stop so that will become a complication afterwards so always it is always recommended to go with the ultrasound guidelines uh, ultrasound guidance always types of central venous catheters so now we have several types of central venous catheters not only one type there are so several types what are those types one non tunnel central catheters another one tunnel central catheters peripherally inserted central catheters and implantable ports so those are some types of the central venous catheters types of central venous catheters again like continuation single and multi lumen catheters are available in all catheter type so that means see, you can see this is the catheter and you can see the lumen there there is only one but look at this one look at this central catheter it has a blue white yellow that means there are several uh, types of lumens are there so single types and multi lumen catheters each lumen must be treated as a separate catheter so each lumen we need to treat them as separate catheters that means only one line into to the body that means we are going to insert but there are several types of lumens so each lumen we have to always treat them as separate catheters and open ended ones the catheter is open at the distal tip the catheter is open at the distal the end of the tip right so distal tip will be open the catheter requires clamping before entry into the system that means what these these distal ends especially these distal ends will be open so always it is better you can see here the clamps are there see so it is always recommended this open ended ones no open ended that means if we insert these catheter to the body so definitely the blood will come if it is not clamped so before insert it the distal ends has to be clamped so you have to clamp these areas before inserting the catheter requires yeah clamps are usually built into the catheter so it is obviously built into the catheter requires periodic flushing so we flushing uh, i will explain you later what is flushing so we need periodic flush that means we need to uh, always continue this flushing we cannot only one, uh, do one and just uh, ignore it we have to do it periodically this flushing we will discuss it at the end so uh, another one now, now this one was open ended one and this is closed ended one so a valve is present at the tip of the catheter now for this one they they do have some valves see here you can see in this picture only valve like if we are giving if we are flushing from this end to this end the valve will open and the other side the valve will definitely be closed so that means there are directions like if this side and this side as well so there are directions to open the valve so groschong valve is one of these closed ended catheter or at the hub of the catheter edge so clamping is not required as the valve is closed except during infusion and aspiration so uh, we don't have to clamp these valves because it is already i mean it has a valve no so if it is infusion or aspiration then we'll have to clamp but still 
we don't have to clamp it while inserting. Uh, like open end or grow shong, uh, grow shong valve, so open end valve that can back up in tubing. So definitely we'll have to always uh, clamp it. And this is grow shong valve, and it has what a clamp. It has a valve, so always valve is closed when no pressure. If there's no pressure from above, the valve will definitely be closed. And positive pressure from syringe opens valve outward for fluid administration. So if you give a positive pressure, definitely the syringe opens the valve outward door to the for the flushing administration. And if you give negative pressure, opens valve inward for blood draw and flush with NS no heparin. Okay, so you can see if we are this is there, no, if you are giving a positive pressure from a syringe, this valve will open outwards. If a negative pressure, that means will invert to the blood draw. That means like what? From I'll show it from here. Yeah, here. If we give positive pressure, that means if we are flushing something inside the body, the valve will open. If you are not giving any pressure, the valve will closed. Valve will be remaining closed. But if we give a negative pressure, that means what? If we keep an a empty syringe here, and if we just Give a negative pressure. Definitely, this one will be open, and the blood from the vein will come out to the syringe. But whenever we stop giving the negative pressure, the valve will again be closed. Right. So it is then again it is better to flush with some uh, normal saline to the blood because otherwise the blood in this line will be clotted. So then again it will become a complicated i mean a complication and again we'll have to replace the catheter so always after withdrawal it is always better to flush it right so we these techniques we will discuss so this is the groschen well and types of central venous catheter again the same thing we are just continuing it composition wise silicon or polyurethanes coatings will be antimicrobial or aseptic coating heparin coating and a uh, radio opaque to confirm tip placement. It, th these tips will be radio opaque, that means it is it is visible for the x rays and all. So that is why it is it is radio opaque, right? So that means we can obviously check whether it is inserted properly or not. The x ray. The type of CVC inserted depends on the type of the therapy to be administrated, that means the type, right? Because we know now there are several types of catheter, but the type of the catheter is depend. The catheter depends on the type of the therapy that we are going to administrate and length of the therapy. That means like how long we are going to give this therapy, how long we are going to take the blood from this patient. Right, depends on that. And previous devices and complications. If any complication that has happened uh, due to previous catheterizations or anything, that means we have to consider that as, a, that as well because that depends and patient preferences. Sometimes pa patient will be not cooperate enough. I mean, uh, he won't be cooperate enough uh, to have the catheter. So even with that, we need to consider and depends when uh, depends on that. So, and this one, non-tunneled catheters. Another one is there because before we discussed about open and open ended and uh, closed ended ones so those were tunneled ones and this is about the non tunneled ones polyurethanes single or multiple lo multiple lumens are there flow varies depends on the size and id id you can see ids red blue uh, white again red blue white and all so it depends the flow rate will be depending with the type the id the identity of the valve of the catheter so uh, we discussed it before also each of these lumens will work as single i mean single catheters no? so that means the flow rate will be different with the specific id and these uh, non tunnel ones inserted percutaneous especially internal jugular vein subclavian vein femoral vein so those are the veins that we normally use when we have to go for the uh, what i mean non tunnel ones so what are the advantages of this? It is quite easy to place and remove also. Like it is quite easy to 
place as well as to remove because it's quite superficial no? in uh, about like especially percutaneous we are going to insert it so it's quite easy to remove and quite easy to place so what are the disadvantages they are at high risk of infection and unused ports must be routinely flushed with heparin solution and clamped that means like obviously if if the catheter is having uh, three lumens and we are if we are using only one lumen at a time the other lumens will be definitely has to be clamped and clean okay and dislodge more easily disadvantages it can be dislodged very easily because it is percutaneous it is placed percutaneously and quite temporary we cannot use this for a long time so that means we need to change it exchange it. frequent exchanges we will have to go like okay, now let's see the insertion informed con uh, consent and sterile techniques we definitely have to use an adequate skin preparation with sterilizing solution setup of equipment positioning and identifying the landmarks that means the place the insertion the location and the, especially the landmarks that means we need to specifically know the anatomy and okay, that means if we need to insert this for, to the jugular vein, that means we need to know where the jugular vein is. So that means we need to know the position. We need to know, we need to identify the landmarks because maybe the jugular vein will be not visible. So that means, but we have to mainly observe, especially the landmarks, right? And adequate local an uh, analgesias. So these stuff we need and especially the techniques that we have to use. And here you can see some uh, of the equipments that normally we are using. Sterile sponges, sterile drips, anesthetic needles, uh, steel needles, triple lumen catheters, guide wire, scalpels, right, IV caps, dilators, sutures, dressing, gauze, everything. So now let's see. Internal jugular vein. Okay. Now, main point of insertion non-tunneled ones uh, is the internal jugular vein. So right side preferred lower pleural dome and thoracic duct on left because why if a question will be there like saying why we are not choosing left side jugular vein for this because especially in the left side the lower pleural dome and the thoracic duct is just near to the internal jugular vein so it is always recommended in the right side. So and uh, Trendelberg position. So I'll, I'll explain you what is Trendelberg position, okay? And head rotated because here I cannot just, I, I can draw it, but still I have to go for another software. So I'll show it to you in the video. What is Trendelberg position? And head rotated approximately 50 degree to the left. That means why we are just uh, shifting head to the left side. That means to expose this area properly, especially say you can see. Just leave, I mean, simply rotating to the left side then only the location will be visible i mean quite visible right so access even even like when accessing it will be very easy to access at the uh, cricoid level while palpating the carotid pulses introduce a needle into the apex of the stenocloidal mastoid then clavicular triangle at a 30 or 40 degree angle to the skin aim the needle Caudally towards the patient's axillateral. So yeah, I will explain you the video. So especially uh, one photo is missing. So yeah, I will show you the video. No problem. And another one, subclavian vein. Even for the subclavian vein as well, we always prefer the right side and supine position, head neutral, arm abducted, Trendelberg position again, 10 to 15 degrees. Shoulders neutral with mild retraction, junction of the medial and middle third of the clavicula. So these, these are the locations. So with practice itself, you need to know, and especially with the practicals that you need to know, uh, what are the anatomical positions of these particular veins and all. So with that, you have to approach when you're uh, approaching it. That means you have to always prefer the anatomical position, especially. So where the subclavian vein is, junction of the medial and mid middle third of the clavicular you can see here middle third 
the medial and the middle third, the junction of the clavicula and the side middle is in about the one centimeter inferior to the clavicle, one centimeter down to the clavicle, allowing the needle to pass under the clavicle. That means we just have to insert just below the clavicle. Okay, here, that is the main reason, especially from the first. So you can see here the sternum, right? So the head, and from there the first one third, and then just above that, if we insert it, then we can find the subclavian vein. So needle should be parallel to the skin. So needle, according to this photo, you can see it is parallel to the skin. Aim towards the supraclavicular notch. So aim should be towards the supraclavicular notch. Okay, so that's the main way of insertion. And uh, let me. So now we are just discussing about what about non-tunnel ones. Okay, so non-tunnel one da one non-tunnel catheters are the percutaneous ones. So that means what are the advantages, disadvantages of those catheters? And especially what are the techniques that you have to use while inserting this? That is so important. Okay, that is very important. So uh, since the practical part is the most important, I will show you a video here because resources are quite uh, limited here with uh, recording and all. So I will go with this. Uh, yeah. I'll Central line is placed. This animation shows how a tunneled central line is put into a vein close to the heart. Click the navigation arrows below the animation screen to play, pause, rewind, or fast forward the animation. This is an animation, but here is a video of YouTube. So. A central line is a narrow, flexible tube which can help give treatment so without the need the for repeated injections. So clamps are there means obviously it can it's be used to get medicines, intravenous fluids line. and take blood samples. But always uh, clamps are there. Okay? It, a small cut every, uh, is made in the skin near your catheter. collarbone. Because this is the entry site. We have to use. The tip of the central line is threaded into a large vein and yeah. towards your heart. This is a place. Part of the tube is tunnelled under your skin to reach an exit site on the chest. Part of the tube will sit outside your body. You may have a local anaesthetic to block feeling in the entry and exit sites. Here we show the tip of a central line, part of the tube tunnelled under the skin towards an exit site. show you one more important thing. After inserting, we need to keep one part of the catheter under the skin. That means the tube tunneled under the skin to the excess side, part of the tube outside the body. So the, bo in the, uh, the body usually will be, I mean, uh, outside part will be short always. Okay, so the tip will be in the central line. So this is the percutaneous ones, no? The other part of the tube remains outside the body. The entry site may be closed with stitches and covered with a clear dressing. You will have a chest x-ray to make sure your central line is correctly positioned. Yeah, that's the thing what I explained to you at the beginning of the PPT. So that means always we can do x-ray to observe whether it is inserted properly or not. And one more thing important is the dressing and the suturing part. Okay, so that is also quite important and you have to do all of these procedures with the septic technique since we don't have uh, much time videos that will will be very helpful for you to understand the procedures. So here, this one is very simple. Again, let's go to the PPT. And another place that we can uh, mainly insert the percutaneous ones, that means the non-tunnel ones, is the femoral vein. For that as well, we need to keep the patient in the supine or the flat position and uh, palpate the femoral arteries, pulse, just to distal with the inguinal ligament. So that means that is the location of the femoral vein. Well, just distal to the inguinal ligament. The femoral vein lies just medial to this. So, 
just medial, medial to the uh, inguinal ligament will be the femoral artery. Okay, so femoral, inguinal ligament, inguinal ligament, you will feel it here, inguinal ligament, and medially, just middle to the inguinal ligament. If you pulse, if you check the pulse, you will find the femoral vein. And uh, another technique of inserting is is Seldinger technique. Okay, so these techniques you can take uh, with the videos. Always it, it is preferred to watch it or just do it by yourself to practice. Only with the theory you won't be able to practice and do all the techniques to understand all the techniques. It will be very difficult with only with the theory. So always try to go with the videos or any stimulators if you have. Think some of the stimulators are available in the internet as well. So please try to practice. Okay. Uh, so this uh, selling the techniques also we use introducing needles to locate vein, especially we need to locate the vein. And wire is threaded through the needle. And uh, it's simply a wire is there. It is threaded through the needle. The needle is removed after that. Okay, that means we are inserting simply the needle, and a wire is inside the needle. So first, that means for the puncturing part, we need to what? To puncture, we need to use the needle simply. And for the same, you can understand simply. Okay? To, for the puncturing, we can use the needle. And after that, after inserting, after puncturing, we can put the thread. Okay, through the needle. And after that, we can just simply remove the needle out. Okay. So skin and vessel are dilated. Catheter is placed over the wire. So then. That why we already placed the wire, and after that we can uh, fix the catheter. Okay, so wire is removed, catheter is secured in place. So those techniques you can simply watch videos like uh, it is quite difficult to explain you with the photos. That means simply a needle and a wire, right? And uh, and we need to put a wire inside this, just through these, and after that. A catheter we have to send through this wire after this we are taking this needle out and we need to send the catheter through this wire okay after that the catheter the tube catheter will be there remaining and then again we can take this uh, wire out so that means only the catheter will remain at the end okay that is a technique post catheter placement Aspirate blood from each port. Flush with saline or sterile water. Okay, that means after after we insert the catheter, that means what we have to do. We need to aspirate blood from each port. And after that, flush. That means just clean it. Flush with saline or sterile water. Secure catheter with sutures. We always need to secure catheter with sutures. Cover with sterile resin. This is very important, sterile resins. Obtain chest x-rays for IJN. SC lines to check whether it is placed properly. Okay, so these are the examples for the locations again. Internal jugular advantages bleeding can be recognized and controlled. Malpositions are rare, less risk of pneumothorax. Disadvantages will be risk of carotid artery pressure, I mean puncture. Pneumothorax is quite possible because internal jugular vein, huh? jugular vein because uh, pneumothorax is quite possible. Because if we are going to uh, misuse the techniques and subclavian, most comfortable for a uh, conscious patient, especially subclavian will be quite comfortable, but it has high risk of bleeding. Vein is non compressible, deep vein, highest risk of pneumothorax again. Okay. Female, easy to find, the vein is very easy to find. And uh, there's no risk of pneumothorax, okay? That is female, female. So, uh, preferred site for emergencies, especially when it comes to the emergencies. Uh, and because in emergencies, we need to give the supply quite fast. And uh, we don't need to take a risk of having pneumothorax, okay? So, we will use female uh, location. And we know the especially inguinal area. Uh, the cleanliness and everything will be quite low, right? So infection will be quite higher, and risk of DVTs 
not good for ambulatory patients. So if the patient is conscious, then what is the first choice? Will first choice uh, catheterization location will be the subcavian vein, and uh, for the ambulatory patients, femoral puncturing will be a disadvantage. Uh, what is DVT? Is deep, deep venous thrombosis. Okay, so if we use this, that would be if the patient is already having a thrombosis or deep venous thrombosis, a risk, then definitely the catheterization will increase. And what are the tunnel catheters now? Before we discussed about the non tunnel ones and what are the tunnel ones. So uh, even this also having single or multiple lumens used for long term therapy, inserted surgically. So these ones we need to insert surgically. Small uh, dacron that means polyethylene uh, uh, puff okay sits in subcutaneous tunnel facili fa uh, facilitate anchoring of the catheter through granulation and acts as a barrier to infection so these uh, cuff will be act as a barrier for the infection infections advantages wise can be left in place identically if no infection blockage or thrombosis okay Self-care by patient. Patient can uh, do self-care about this stuff. Because it is quite uh, less... I mean, it will uh, not be prone to, uh, not prone to infections as the uh, percutaneous ones. So they can uh, care, do care about by themselves. Okay, and external position can be prepared. Disadvantages inserted in the operation room. So that means we cannot do it in the emergencies or we cannot do it in the normal wards. So that means definitely we need to go for the OR operation rooms. Requires a dressing and frequent assessment. Okay, why? Because now we need to do it in the surgery room. That means the invasion will be quite difficult and different from the percutaneous ones. So dressing is quite important. So that means we need to always assess the dressing and change the dressings. And uh, external device, so the device will be quite big and external. Okay, physician must oh, sorry, uh, physician must remove. That means normal uh, practitioners they cannot do it. Only the physicians can. I mean, properly do this with the proper techniques and with the experience. Okay, what is this now? Now we are discussing about the tunnel ones. No, so peripherally inserted central catheters. What are uh, what is this peripherally? This is not quite uh, near to the central venous line. This is from the peripheral side, right? Before we inserted the jugular vein, femoral vein, right? And subclavian vein, those are like quite for the central venous line. I mean, central venous system. But this is quite peripheral. That means by the side of the normal central line, right? So the peripherally inserted central catheters, PICCs. Silicon or polyurethane, uh, polyurethanes and single or multiple lumens can be visible. Lumen approximately 40 to 60 centimeters long. Used for intermediate to long term therapy inserted percutaneously. So these peripheral ones also we are using percutaneously. So these are this like those are not about the tunnel ones. So this is special in the uh, long term process we are using and inserted percutaneous. So what are the veins that we normally use for this? Basilic vein and the cephalic vein. So the tip rest in the superior vena cava at the cavo atrial junction, right? So tip has to be in the superior vena cava at the cavo atrial junction. So that is why it is 40 to 60 centimeters long. So lumens, central line, PICC line one two three post uh, decision with three lumens normally these are the lumen types and all and proximally we use for blood sampling even for medications or blood ad administration uh, and medication wise TPNs and study for CVP monitoring blood administration high volume of uh, viscous fluids uh, colloids and again medication so I mean uh, particular lumens are there especially uh, especially the size and the color. The identity, the PPT is not quite 
easy to understand for you. So what are the advantages of the PICCs? Can remain in place for several weeks to year, a year. That means we can keep this for a long time. That means we don't have to consider more exchanging this. No? So can be easily removed, obviously, because this is peripheral. It is very easy to remove. Low infection rates. Since this is just uh, outside and we can keep this area very clean always. Right. So infection wise, the infection rate wise, it is quite low. Because it is ex external portion can be replaced. Even like what is the external part, I mean, what is remaining outside the body, we can just simply replace it or repair it. Okay. So what are the disadvantages? This is having low flows. Why? Because peripheral veins will be quite smaller than the central vein line, venous lines. So mainly if we give it, it will take time and the flow rate will be quite low. It will take time to go to the central venous line. So that is why the rate will be slow. Okay. Requires a dressing and frequent assessment. Definitely we need frequent assessment and we need to check for the dressings. Okay, and but but the tunnel ones we don't have to mainly uh, do the frequent assessment only for the dressings we can do. That means the patient by uh, by himself they can manage it. The tunnel ones I mean. So about the PICCs, we need quite uh, we need frequent assessment and dressings we need to change frequently and external device it is. So small goal, PICC not recommended for blood sampling. Even for blood sampling, uh, small goal PICC is, also, is not recommended. What is this now? Implantable venous access device, EVAD. Implantable, that means we can just place it. We can plant it, implantable. Long term, months to years, we are going to use this implantable ones. Single or dual chamber port. Surgically implanted in the subcutaneous tissue, usually in the upper chest. You can see here, surgically implanted this. We implanted this in the surgery the room or surgically we have to implant this. Single or double lumen. Some will be having double lum lumens and some only will be having single lumens. So each chamber must be managed separately. If it is double lumen, we need to always manage each lumen separately. So here it is a catheter again, but it is placed under the skin. So that means if whenever you want, so this acts as a vein again, right? So whenever you need the samples, you can just simply I mean invade this, invade this area and take the samples. Okay, that is the long that is for the long-term process and it is implantable venous access device. A non-coring point needle is required to access the device. So that means this is the thing. Non-coring point needle. Non-coring point needle. We can access this device. An unused port is flushed every 28 days with heparin solution. This is having two ports. We are If we are using only one, the other one has to be always flushed with heparin. Right? Solution. So this is the needle that we are normally using to get the samples or for the flushing purpose or anything so advantages internal device it is not external device that means you don't have to worry about carrying it or you don't have to worry about keeping this this device so that is an internal device no dressing or side care that means we don't have to worry about the dressing can be permanent this we can keep it for a for the lifetime and unrestricted activity, decreased risk of infection because since it is inside the body and no external components to break, may be used as long as the device is required functional. Else we can just remove it and uh, do the uh, next procedures, okay, for the procedure. So what are the disadvantages? We need the needle access, right? According to this picture, you can see we need to access with the needle. So it is a needle access again. So that means again, every time, each and every time, again, we'll have to simply invade the uh, superficial skin. So needle access. Surgical procedure required to insert, remove, 
and cost wise it is quite uh, expensive so those are the disadvantages complications associated with central venous catheters okay now this is again quite important for you guys complications associated with the central venous catheters so these are the complications acute and chronic complications we can simply divide it complications can rate depends on the site patient factors maybe illness variations or anatomical position and anatomy of the place i mean especially the location and operator skill and experience complications if the person the operator is not experienced enough for this uh, procedure again it can lead to some complications that means if the site is having infection it can lead for the infection the complication so those are the things that you have to mainly consider so what are the acute complications cardiac dysarrhythmias due to cardiac irritation by the wires or catheter tip maybe and uh, hematoma formations arterial venous puncture uh, by puncturing these the hematomas can be formed and mechanical injury to nearby structures okay. uh, we discussed this as and at this as a disadvantage so it can harmful okay pneumothorax or hemothorax it can be an atrial wall puncture not only the vein, veins the arterial walls will be, can be punctured pericardial tamponades bubble penetrations when we are doing the femoral catheterization the bubble also can be penetrated bladder puncturing femoral nerve injuries and air embolus malposition loss guide wire so those are the complications that can happen simply so what are the chronic complications the chronic complications will remain for the for a long time infections catheter fragmentation non function or blockage a fibrin builds on and around the catheter and vessel thrombosis or thromboembolisms now let's get this one by one air yeah, embolism deadly complication associated with central venous system central venous catheters especially the signs and symptoms will be uh respiratory changes sudden shortness of breath if this is going to be embolism air yeah, embolism and cyanosis and cardiovascular system changes especially high uh, heart rate and sudden onset of chest pain low blood pressure uh, central nerve system changes will be altered neurological signs dizziness confusion loss of consciousness so those can be the signs and symptoms of air embolism so how to manage it left lateral uh, decomputers with head low position this is the position so okay recumbent position and uh, tridentinal position so this is the position that we need to do clamp the central venous catheter we need to clamp it and 100% oxygen supply we need to give direct removal of air from the venous circulation by aspiration from central venous catheter in the right atrium may be attempted okay to minimize the change of air entering the system we can ensure the lumen is clamped prior to opening the system okay mean that that is the thing we explained before we need to always clamp the lumen before entering position the patient so that the insertion site is at or below the level of the heart during insertion and removal of catheter that means this position will be very important okay infections so in this picture you can see infections especially with the suturing side the puncture side it is quite visible and it is complicated no you can see so most frequent and serious complication is this local infections especially with cellulitis central line associated bloodstream infection sometimes uh, after inserting this also some if there is any central or any bloodstream infection definitely that will also affect with this so causative organism will be staphylococcus epidermidis epidermidis and staphylococcus aureus maybe candida and risk factors will be always cutaneous uh, colonization of the insertion site insertion site if there is an infection that will prone to a complication moisture under the dressing if the dressing part has not done properly if any moisture is remaining under the dressing that means infection the bacteria can grow easily with the with that uh, environment and prolonged catheter life that means if you are not going to change that if you are not going to exchange the catheter and we are going to keep it for a long time again the infections can occur 
technique of care and placement of the central line. The care techniques, if it is not properly done, then again, that will lead to infections or complications. Infections we can easily prevent by the sterile techniques. Fever during infusion, uh, arrhythmia, induration along track, drainage and insertion site, at insertion site, culture for diagnosis, bloodstream catheter, catheter itself we can do. That means we can get the culture for diagnosis. And how to draw blood from central line for culture? That means if we need to take blood from the central line, how to draw? Simply, sample should be what is sitting in the line. Draw 5 to 6 ml from the line and use that for the sample. Do not flush and discard first. That means to check the, for the infections or anything, we always need to take the blood first, no, not the flushing part first. It is also drawing other labs, draw central line culture first. If the if the complication with the catheter, that means the catheter, the catheter is going to damage, the fluid will leak from the catheter. And Severed or ruptured catheter, fluid leaking from the hub or exit site. Cracked hub may, can be burning or pain with flushing or infusion. So even ever it, it is with flushing or infusion, if you feel, if the patient will feel burning sensation or pain, that means the catheter can be damaged. That is due to the damaged catheter. Okay. Swelling along the catheter tract. That means again, it there's a leaking, the fluid leaking. And this uh, can repair some, I mean, uh, simply we can repair some catheters, especially with this procedure, but uh, always it is always, that is why assessment is need, needed, always. So ways to prevent the damage, how to uh, prevent the damage, do not clamp catheter with yet. Do not force flush if resistant is met. If in what is this pinch of sign? Occlusions. Occlusions can happen, especially mechanical, external or internally. Non-thrombotic uh, precipitate. Lipid accumulations can happen. Thrombotic, especially with the intraluminal clot, partially or total fibrin sheath, neural thrombus, fibrin trail. What are these? Okay, the, here's an example for liquid, lipid accumulation. And uh, intraluminal clot formation. So here you can see in the lumen, some clot, clots are formed. So after that, the area, the uh, diameter of the lumen will be low, I mean decreased. That means the flow rate will be low and the pressure will build up inside the catheter. So it can lead to some damages to the catheter again. Okay. So if you feel when uh, flushing, there's any force, we, that, that means we need to give some force for the attempt, then don't do it. That means maybe you have to remove the catheter or replace it. So those are the five bridge teeth formation along the catheter. See? So definitely the blockage will be happening. So those are the complications simply. The five bridge teeth. And infuse but not aspirate. Sometimes we can infuse but we cannot take something back. We cannot aspirate. So something is not right. That means there can be a problem. Do not, don't ignore this problem. Look for the pain or swelling. If there's any pain or swelling, we have to always observe it. Particularly while infusing, catheter problems, pinch, nick, uh, I mean, night or crack, maybe. Could be bowl valve uh, uh, effect caused by fibrin trail. So that means this fibrin trail will act as a valve now. Okay. So that means it can, it is a complication. Right. So we'll definitely have to consider about this uh situation and can aspirate but not to infuse sometimes we can aspirate we can take that do something back but we cannot infuse we can flush it that means again the reverse wall valve effect is occurred caused by partial obstruction in catheter or in planted port preservers call vascular access team Possible, so those are the back team, okay, vascular access team. Possible need to 
at a plus therapy a uh, possible need for the line exchange or replacement that is the thing if if you feel or if you uh, experience in these stuff you cannot ignore it always have to call or have to go for the advices of the vet team okay pinch off syndrome what is pinch off syndrome can occur when catheter is pinched between clavicle and strip we know for the uh, jugular vein we have to just op simply insert it just under the catheter but if it is pinched in between these two then again what it can be obstructed the well the tube can be obstructed so catheter kings compresses and li uh, line patency may be varied with patient position or movements hazardous repeated catheter compositions a uh, compression and shear the catheter always require intervention now line care implanted ports require special non coring needle and sterile technique to assess assess only by vet and nurses who have passed competency evaluation that means who are experienced enough to do these i mean uh, procedures have to do the procedure in other technicians they cannot always access these okay is quite important that means you need to practice properly only with the theories you cannot uh, obviously you need to watch some videos you need to go and practice with practice this in the hospital or the wards assess port and catheters normally one the the port is assessed the non coring needle can stay in for a week normally that's the thing the it's a technique and it's a procedure so uh, normally we are using for uh, this i mean catheters for dialysis and uh, aphrodisiac causes as well so usually dedicated to therapy requires order by normally md for use md must also order specific flushing protocol if you must infuse into this catheter never flush unveiling heparin into patient withdraw 2 to 5 ml before infusing those are the simple techniques that you always have to consider that means when it comes to the flushing as well as when it comes to the withdrawing the blood or blood we always have to follow some procedures okay managing multiple ports so this is about the port cares no so we obviously if the multiple ports are there we need to always what manage it like even before we discussed about something like if the if there are three lumens and we are only using only only one lumen that means what will happen the remaining lumens we will always have to clean or right we need to flush it and keep we cannot just ignore it always we do have to care so that is the thing we have to run ppn heparin for other iv solution medications in smaller ports pause all infusions in all lumens before drawing blood so there are so many things that you have to consider when managing multiple ports as well so always when it comes to the blood drawing we are taking out blood from the body we need to do it with the largest port okay those are the simple techniques that especially with the 16 gauge and 18 gauge lab draws from central lines for the laboratory diagnosis laboratory uh, samples we can uh, take samples from central lines for that again stop all infusions if you need to withdraw blood always stop infusion do not turn uh, machines off okay i mean this is only about the infusion part so although the blood mixes quickly and carries a solution away infusion from different ports can mix with blood drawn for lab work if we are giving uh, some infusions or in drugs any medications we need to stop for a while because it can mix it up with the blood sample that we are taking for the laboratory examination use sterile technique to separate a line from the catheter port cover the end of the line with the sterile needles adapter or catheter lab draws from central line again use larger port for the withdrawals always use the larger port first flush with normal saline 
okay first flush with normal saline if tpn running uh, through the line flush with more normal saline to eliminate all di uh, diluents that may cling to catheter wall and when it comes to withdraw and discard 5 to 6 milliliter always before taking the samples first discard 5 to 6 milliliter of blood use another syringe to draw sample that means first before taking samples you need to flush with normal saline and then you have to discard 5 to 6 milliliter blood and then with another syringe you can draw the samples so the basic procedure after all blood withdrawals or blood infusions clear the line of all blood even if starting maintenance infusion flush with 20 to 40 milliliters of normal saline PICC lines usually require 30 to uh, 20 to 30 milliliters normal saline sometimes and restart fluid infusion because we already stopped fluid infusion vaporizing and all so now you can restart it or do positive pressure saline flush and clamp the line if the catheter has a cap draw the blood and flush through the cap change the cap when blood accumulates the and enable so and unable to clear the flushing or every 24 hours whichever occurs first Document all flushes. That means you always have to have a documentation with you. Especially which port that you use to flush or use to withdraw the blood. Okay. And what is the location? At what time that you used it? So those documents, those uh, facts, those data you always have to document. Okay. Syringe size and flush pressure, especially this is quite important again. Uh, that is why always the manufacturer recommendations like 25, that means maximum will be 10 ml syringes we have to use for the flushing because the pressure will be different from the different different diameters that the normal physics that we know, right? When a success devices physicians order, like especially what is the access device that always physician has to recommend it and what are the units of heparin that we have to use uh, and especially with normal saline it depends with the catheter and the pace of the catheterization so flushing technique wise to clear the blood in central line flushing why we are doing this to clear the blood in central lines use intermittent positive pressure to create turbulence and thoroughly uh, thoroughly clear the line that means obviously if any blood clotting or anything happens the uh, the line will be obstructed so always we need to make sure it is clean so for that we need to flush the line with ns and with heparins as well okay after flushing any peripheral open-ended or groschon cannula keep thumb on plunger and inject while withdrawing syringe this prevents an air void that permits blood to back up into the cannula and foam ports. So flushing lines, a single use of syringe never be used more than once. That means if you use a syringe, we cannot use it for the second time. That means only once we can use it and 10 ml obviously. Never use a syringe smaller than 10 ml. The pressure created by the smaller syringe could be damaged to the catheter. Okay, Volume, minimize it. A minimum of twice the volume of the catheter should be used to flush in generally for adult 10 ml is sufficient 9% 0 0.9% uh, sodium chloride that means normal saline solution should be used frequency has to be minimum of uh, 8 hours flush with 10 ml ns before and after every use of the lines maintenance mode flush with 10 ml ns every 24 hours flush using a pulsatile or stop start technique creates turbulence with the catheter to adequately flush medicine from the line. Okay, then this is quite important again. After inserting the catheter, we need to always consider about the dressing. The centers of the disease control prevention CDC recommendations are used either sterile gauze or sterile transport, transparent uh, semi-parable dressings for this. Replace dressings if damp, loosen or visible soil, 
do not use antibiotic ointments or creams when you are uh, doing the dressings don't use them and when it comes to the dressing change short term cvc sites normally two days for gold and at least uh, seven days of transparent PICC 24 hour post insertion you need to change it then transparent dressings five to seven days unless soil or loose you can use it goes normally if you use normal goes you have to always change within two days if it is wet or soil low non uh, occlusive then again you have to change the time that you sold five percent more than five percent of uh, chlorhexidines to cleansing skin during dressing change you can use so dressing change wise dressing removal stabilized catheter can uh, lower lock hub to prevent dislodgement separate dressing away from the lower lock hub and toward insertion site or exceedings that we can use patient is uh, diaphoretic with great deal of fluid present of skin on skin area should be scrubbed for two minutes to ensure bactericidal activity during dressing change access internal catheter length to determine if the migration had displaced catheter tip. Sterile occlusive dressing should be covered entire insertion site, suture wing and at least 2.5 cm of the excursion tubing is recommended. So dressing change procedures that the normal thing, the septic techniques that you have to use, always you have to gather the supplies. Hand hygiene is must and uh, very clean gloves that you have to use. And masks remove all dressings if any dressings are remaining remove gloves after doing this and use sterile gloves always inspect the catheter site surrounding the skin before inserting it cleansing the site allow to dry secure catheter in place apply sterile dressing to the site document the date time initials on new dressing document procedure especially you have to follow follow up if any complications an external catheter length then that means you have to obviously change the change the uh, catheter maybe or you have to consider of uh, doing the further procedures so yeah this is the end of the chapter today so basically with the short time of period we had to uh, cover so many points uh, but as a reading material you can use this ppt as well as your textbook so always recommend that because it has more facts that you have to study so please follow those uh, follow the guidebook of oum as well and uh, for the superficial and the basic knowledge you can use this ppts as well so uh, about this there are so many videos in youtube uh, since uh, i have to finish this recording first so i will i'm not going to show you all the videos here Especially when it comes to the removal of the central line, you have to follow a procedure, follow up some uh, perfect procedure. So for that, you need to uh, go with the videos or the OUM guidebook, it's not mentioned in the PPT. Um, and when it comes to the flushing and blood withdrawal, that is also quite important, especially how to flush it with 10 name and syringe and when it comes to the blood withdrawing what are the procedures that you have to follow so for though for that always recommended to watch the videos and uh, go with the guidebook and yes so uh, i'm going to end the chapter now thank you very much and please go with the videos and the guidebook okay so always by watching the videos you can Check the pre check the procedures properly. Otherwise, only with the theory, it is not quite easy to understand, right? Okay then. Thank you so much.